For a chronological guide to this subject, see Timeline of Electromagnetic Theory. The history of electromagnetic theory begins with ancient measures to deal with atmospheric electricity, in particular lightning. People then had little understanding of electricity, and were unable to scientifically explain the phenomena. In the 19th century there was a unification of the history of electric theory with the history of magnetic theory. It became clear that electricity should be treated jointly with magnetism, because wherever charges are in motion electric current results in magnetism is due to electric current. The source term for electric field is electric charge whereas that for magnetic field is electric current. Magnetism was not fully explained until the idea of magnetic induction was developed. Electricity was not fully explained until the idea of electric charge was developed. Ancient and Classical History The knowledge of static electricity dates back to the earliest civilizations, but for millennia it remained merely an interesting and mystifying phenomenon, without a theory to explain its behavior and often confused with magnetism. The ancients were acquainted with rather curious properties possessed by two minerals, amber and magnetic iron ore. Amber, when rubbed, attracts light bodies. Magnetic iron ore has the power of attracting iron. Based on his find of an Olmec hematite artifact in Central America, the American astronomer John Carlson has suggested that the Olmec may have discovered and used the geomagnetic lodestone compass earlier than 1000. BC. If true, this predates the Chinese discovery of the geomagnetic lodestone compass by more than a millennium. Carlson speculates that the Olmecs may have used similar artifacts as a directional device for astrological or geomantic purposes, or to orient their temples, the dwellings of the living or the interments of the dead. The earliest Chinese literature reference to magnetism lies in a 4th century BC book called Book of the Devil Valley Master. The lodestone makes iron come or it attracts it long before any knowledge of electromagnetism existed. People were aware of the effects of electricity, lightning and other manifestations of electricity such as saint. Elmo's fire were known in ancient times, but it was not understood that these phenomena had a common origin. Ancient Egyptians were aware of shocks when interacting with electric fish or other animals. The shocks from animals were apparent to observers since prehistory by a variety of peoples that came into contact with them. Another possible approach to the discovery of the identity of lightning and electricity from any other source is to be attributed to the Arabs, who before the 15th century used the same Arabic word for lightning and the electric ray. Thales of Miletus, writing at around 600 BC, noted that rubbing fur on various substances such as amber would cause them to attract specks of dust and other light objects. Thales wrote on the effect now known as static electricity. The Greeks noted that if they rubbed the amber for long enough they could even get an electric spark to jump. The electrostatic phenomena was again reported millennia later by Roman and Arabic naturalists and physicians. Several ancient writers, such as Pliny the Elder and Scribonius Largus, attested to the numbing effect of electric shocks delivered by catfish and torpedo rays. Pliny in his books writes, The ancient Tuscans by their learning hold that there are nine gods that send forth lightning and those of eleven sorts. This was in general the early pagan idea of lightning. The ancients held some concept that shocks could travel along conducting objects. Patients suffering from ailments such as gout or headache were directed to touch electric fish in the hope that the powerful jolt might cure them. A number of objects found in Iraq in 1938 dated to the early centuries AD, called the Baghdad Battery, resembles a galvanic cell and is believed by some to have been used for electroplating. The claims are controversial because of supporting evidence and theories for the uses of the artifacts. Physical evidence on the objects conducive for electrical functions, and if they were electrical in nature. As a result the nature of these objects is based on speculation, and the function of these artifacts remains in doubt. Middle Ages and the Renaissance 
Magnetic attraction was once accounted by Aristotle and Thales for as the working of a soul in the stone. In the 11th century, the Chinese scientist Chen Kuo was the first person to write of the magnetic needle compass and that it improved the accuracy of navigation by employing the astronomical concept of true north and by the 12th century the Chinese were known to use the lodestone compass for navigation. In 1187, Alexander Neckham was the first in Europe to describe the compass and its use for navigation. Magnetism was one of the few sciences which progressed in medieval Europe, for in the 13th century Peter Peregrinus, a native of Mary Court in Picardy, made a discovery of fundamental importance. The French 13th century scholar conducted experiments on magnetism and wrote the first extant treatise describing the properties of magnets and pivoting compass needles. The dry compass was invented around 1300 by Italian inventor Flavio Gioja, Archbishop Eustathius of Thessalonica, Greek scholar and writer of the 12th century, records that Oliver, king of the Goths, was able to draw sparks from his body. The same writer states that a certain philosopher was able, while dressing, to draw sparks from his clothes, a result seemingly akin to that obtained by Robert Simmer in his silk stocking experiments, a careful account of which may be found in the Philosophical Transactions, 1759. Italian physician Gerolamo Cardano wrote about electricity and de subtilite distinguishing, perhaps for the first time, between electrical and magnetic forces. Toward the late 16th century, a physician of Queen Elizabeth's time, Dr. William Gilbert, in De Magneta, expanded on Cardano's work and invented the new Latin word electricus from lambda epsilon capital rho o micron nu, the Greek word for amber. Gilbert, a native of Colchester, fellow of St. John's College, Cambridge, and sometime president of the College of Physicians, was one of the earliest and most distinguished English men of science, a man whose work Galileo thought enviably great. He was appointed court physician, and a pension was settled on him to set him free to continue his researches in physics and chemistry. Gilbert undertook a number of careful electrical experiments, in the course of which he discovered that many substances other than amber, such as sulfur, wax, glass, etc., were capable of manifesting electrical properties. Gilbert also discovered that a heated body lost its electricity and that moisture prevented the electrification of all bodies. Due to the now well-known fact that moisture impaired the insulation of such bodies, he also noticed that electrified substances attracted all other substances indiscriminately, whereas a magnet only attracted iron. The many discoveries of this nature earned for Gilbert the title of founder of the electrical science. By investigating the forces on a light metallic needle, balanced on a point, he extended the list of electric bodies and found also that many substances, including metals and natural magnets, showed no attractive forces when rubbed. He noticed that dry weather with north or east wind was the most favorable atmospheric condition for exhibiting electric phenomena, an observation liable to misconception until the difference between conductor and insulator was understood. Gilbert's work was followed up by Robert Boyle, the famous natural philosopher who was once described as father of chemistry and uncle of the Earl of Cork. Boyle was one of the founders of the Royal Society when it met privately in Oxford, and became a member of the council after the society was incorporated by Charles II. In 1663, he worked frequently at the new science of electricity, and added several substances to Gilbert's list of electrics. He left a detailed account of his researches under the title of Experiments on the Origin of Electricity. Boyle, in 1675, stated that electric attraction and repulsion can act across a vacuum. One of his important discoveries was that electrified bodies in a vacuum would attract light substances, thus indicating that the electrical effect did not depend upon the air as a medium. He also added resin to the then-known list of electrics. 
This was followed in 1660 by Otto von Guericke, who invented an early electrostatic generator. By the end of the 17th century, researchers had developed practical means of generating electricity by friction with an electrostatic generator. But the development of electrostatic machines did not begin in earnest until the 18th century when they became fundamental instruments in the studies about the new science of electricity. The first usage of the word electricity is ascribed to Sir Thomas Brown in his 1646 work, Pseudodoxia Epidemica. The first appearance of the term electromagnetism on the other hand comes from an earlier date. 1641, Magnus, by the Jesuit luminary Athanasius Kicker, carries on page 640 the provocative chapter heading, Electromagnetismos i.e., on the magnetism of amber, or electrical attractions and their causes.